Want to make me own up to the pride? I mentioned that Northern was the second best college marching band in South Dakota. <laughs> Do you want to make me own no, up? No, I think Jenna called you out enough on that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for not making me do that in recording. Well, welcome to the Cut for Time podcast here at the Canton United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Clay. I'm joined by Eric Stearns. We have the opportunity to get to, to dig into my message from Sunday, uh, which was about the triumphal entry that Jesus makes into Jerusalem, about the intentional choices that Jesus makes, and about just kind of how the crowd uh, gets riled up on what we call Palm Sunday, uh, but then also it's the same crowd that is there on the day of Jesus' crucifixion. And so we're going to be just digging into how that works and how that operates and just uh, what that means for us. So let's get into it. Sounds good. No, I really liked that kind of the discussion in your sermon this week about people getting caught up in the moment and just mm -hmm. cheering for Jesus, even regardless if they believed who he was or not at that point. Right. Um, the I had never really thought of it that way. Um, and it makes perfect sense. I mean, people get caught up in things all the time, not just cheering for others, but just, hey, right. here's a fad over here. I love Stanley Cups. <laughs> we are susceptible. We are susceptible uh -huh. to the fads and what's cool and what's pot, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Regardless if, yeah, regardless if you actually believe in whatever it is, mm -hmm. because everyone else is doing it, we're going to do it. Yep, exactly. You know? and, yeah, I don't know if you found this with Everett being in school, but I think with Autumn being in school, like, you know, the things that we're into just change so quickly. And like, it's mainly just because, well, my friend likes this, so I have to like this, or I'm going to like this because he likes it and I like him. And so, yeah, then we have to end up with two binders full of Pokemon cards. <laughs> so, yeah yeah that's exactly right i yeah. mean yeah you just get swept up in it and so they got swept up into the right thing they fell into the right problem right right yeah um yep. but yep. when you're when when you're uh i don't know if wishy-washy is the right way to say it but when you're wishy-washy you can quickly fall out of stuff too mm -hmm. absolutely yeah Yep. And so, yeah, maybe maybe talk about that a little bit and just kind of your thoughts on how these people quickly fell out of the support. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, because it does happen. I mean, the the crowd that is crying for Jesus and shouting Hosanna and cutting off palm branches and throwing their cloaks in the road is the same crowd. It's the same Passover crowd that so Jerusalem would have swollen beyond its normal capacity because the Passover was happening and all the Jews had to go to Jerusalem. Like there was a reason why the, 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 the chief priests and the scribes were trying not to do this during this time because Jerusalem was so full of people, but Jesus made this entry into Jerusalem and like was riding on a colt they went you know or, and, and coming through one of the gates and like the gate that people believe the Messiah was going to come through and in a weird way did um just not how they expected him not not how they expected him to and not who they expected him to be but the Messiah did ride in through the golden gate of Jerusalem like can you pause can can you talk about what they expected yeah, sure. We see it in the book of Acts, um, you know, where where even after the after the resurrection has happened before Jesus is ascended, you know, his disciples are still like, OK, cool. But now's the time right now. Now's the time that you're going to establish the kingdom. You're going to establish God's kingdom. You've been talking about this kingdom for years now. This is the time, right? Like they killed you and you're alive again. And that's awesome. But now you're going to fight back. You're going to kick them out so that we can be a free nation like fully free, like we were when David was in charge right now. Now is the time like they were expecting a political revolution and a military overthrow of the Roman Empire right then from Jesus as their leader. And that's, you know, Messiah is, you know, we think of it as a religious term now, but it was a political term then. Like it was going someone that was going to come and institute a new rule of law um, for the for the people to follow. Um, and they wanted that to be Jesus because they liked what he was talking about for the most part. But 
that's not what the kingdom of God is, and that's not what Jesus was instituting. Um, it was not a political revolution at all. It was a returning to returning their hearts to God, um, and not just in a way that was this cold, dead legalism, but really fully engulfing their hearts. Um, so, yeah, they, the people were expecting a political leader uh, to to lead them to to a newfound freedom. But they got instead was Jesus. And so died. they were expecting him. So, so the the comment about him coming through the gate, mm -hmm. they were expecting their Messiah to come through that gate. Yes, and he came through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. But in yeah, a more like, grand entrance, definitely. Like they, like Jesus makes some very intentional choices in this story. Um, you know, like Jesus enters through that particular gate in Jerusalem. That was not the gate that he absolutely had to use. That was the gate. Um, and then Jesus also comes riding on the donkey, like on, you know, the animal that is not seen as a war animal. Like he could have been coming in riding on a horse like they, that's what they would have been expecting as a horse. Like that's the you know, if you're getting if you're getting on a horse, you're going to ride that sucker into battle and let's go, you know, but no, he rode in on a donkey. Um, you know, and that, that wasn't a very intentional choice, uh, to, to, to signal that he is not coming as a conquering King. He is coming as one that is humble. Interesting. So yeah, yeah. sorry about that yeah. version rabbit trail. No, definitely like the people. messianic, the messianic expectations are, 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 are huge. And especially right now where, where we are in the story right now, like, they're ready for this to happen. And Jesus is running out of, you know, they don't, they don't know this, even though Jesus has told, especially the disciples, Jesus is running out of time on earth for them to get what they're expecting from Jesus. And what's about to happen is completely outside of their wildest expectations. So do you think that's why people turned on him so quickly? It could have been a mitigating factor. I mean, they, they could have, because mm -hmm. Jesus does spend, quite a bit of time during this week teaching and like, you know, um, this is where we get there is during Holy week when Jesus is teaching that we get, you know, uh, Matthew 25 and the parable of the sheep and the goats and the judging of the nations and doing unto the least of these, um, you know, and the fact that Jesus is not breaking from this narrative at all, that could have soured the crowd. I mean, if you are following somebody and you're like, okay, cool. Jesus is finally doing the things we kind of want him to do. But almost like it's going to it's going to change soon. Right. And with Jesus, the answer is no. Like Jesus is going to continue mm -hmm. to teach about a kingdom of uh, the kingdom of God that is full of love and inclusion and forgiving others and turning other cheeks. And, you know, all of this stuff that Jesus has been talking about this entire time, it's going to continue up until the point where G where, where Pilate's going to ask him point blank. Are you the king of the Jews? Are you who these people think you are? And and Jesus is going to refuse to answer these questions or answer them, you know, depending on which gospel you read, he's going to answer them in a cryptic way where, you know, he's turning Pilate's words back on himself or he's just not going to say a thing. If you're being fickle or wishy-washy, that would sour me pretty quick. You know, if if I if I was if I wasn't super committed to the to the to the whole process, not mm -hmm. getting what I want would be the perfect the perfect way to say, well, then maybe Barabbas, you know, this breathing murderer would be, you know, a better choice to to have let free. So mm -hmm. because at least he's, you know, he's as, he's as bloodthirsty against the Romans as I am. Right. Yeah. That guy made me mad. So right. let's just get rid of him. because He made me yeah. mad. Barabbas exactly. didn't do anything to me. So let's let him go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah in in some kind of weird way jesus duped them you know into thinking that he was going to be the messiah that they expected and then not being that right people just didn't see the bigger picture though mm -hmm. they weren't they weren't prepared for out off of this earth or outside of this world yes uh, yep expectations yep Exactly.
Yeah, they got so stuck on their expectations. And like, as you read the gospel and read what Jesus did, like, especially if you're reading through Matthew's gospel, where Matthew was so insistent on this was done to fulfill this prophecy, this was done to fulfill this scripture, this was done, like Matthew is super the one to prove that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. And that is fulfilling all these things that that the prophet said that the Messiah was going to do. He, he was fulfilling all these things. He was doing all the things. He was giving the people every indication that he was going to be, that he, that he is the Messiah, but just not how the people thought. Right. Was going you to know, be, could have been. And, and like we've talked about, hindsight can be 2020 and we can, in mm -hmm. retrospect, under, it's, it's easier to understand. But, you know, when you're in the moment, it's sometimes hard to put those pieces together. For sure. Uh, Oh yeah, for sure. It, it to us it does not make sense of what happened. Um and and at the time I would like to think to myself that I would not be one that, you know, would would um choose to crucify Jesus, but mm -hmm. also at the time, if I'm also one that's expecting this war hero that's gonna come in and kick the Romans out. Like, maybe I'm not thinking clearly and understanding all of the, the Jewish doctrine that I've been learning for my whole life. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, honestly, for our sake, thank goodness they screwed up because otherwise maybe <laughs> maybe it would just be for the Jews and, and not for us then. <laughs> well, I mean, yes, but no, because Jesus does have some very clear indications that universe, that, that salvation is universal and that salvation is bigger than, um, you know, especially in John 10, where he's talking about being the shepherd and there's other flocks that, you know, that also hear Jesus voice and Jesus has to take them to like, that's, that's us. Like that's Gentiles, you know? So I always think that mm -hmm. Gentile salvation was a part of what Jesus was up to. Yeah. It's not just that because Jesus died, that God thought that thought that that was a good idea. So I think God thought that was a good idea all along. Mm -hmm. This week is designed for us to know Jesus better. Um, and so, you know, mm -hmm. the, don't be like the crowds that get so easily swayed, you know, because it, it, you know, the Holy Week is a hard week for all of us. And, you know, you can be swayed into, well, it's Thursday and I'm tired and the week's been crazy. And so I'm not going to go to this and it's Friday and I want to go do something other than church stuff on Friday. And, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not, you know, I will, I will not go so far as to say, if you don't come to good to Monday, Thursday or, or good Friday, that you're killing Jesus. But, you know, the, these services are there for you to grow in your faith and know Jesus better and, you know, identify what, you know, what, what really matters to you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and the less we focus, the easier we are to be swayed. Right. Yes, for sure. I mean, it's just it's it's a muscle it's a muscle like anything else mm -hmm. that without exercise it weighs away without um without yeah. work on our faith it's it goes yep. to the wayside and then we just go with whatever whichever direction the wind pushes us mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's really important to to be at these things to be present so yeah obviously this is a big week in the church um holy week is probably the biggest one right yep um so we have services uh thursday friday and sunday two on sunday morning so run us yeah. through the the gamut yeah so uh thursday night is maundy thursday a day to receive the mandate of jesus to love one another um and as as, as jesus has loved us and so we are going to be doing our Living Last Supper. Uh, we are moving it back to the CHS Commons. Uh, so we have the opportunity to be on their stage and uh, to present that to the community. Uh, it really has become a community service because it is uh, Celebrate Canton and also uh, Bethany Reformed uh, doing that with us, uh, providing both uh, some personnel and some support for that. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, we are talking with Jesus, our, our, our fearless leader <laughs> of Living Last Supper. So I get, get to come see Eric and that'll be at seven o'clock on Monday, Thursday. Uh, and then good Friday service. We're doing a little bit, something a little bit kind of, kind of creative, kind of experiential. We're going to be downstairs in Wesley hall, uh, and seated in the round, uh, for a service of silence and reflection. Um, we'll be hearing, 
Uh, several different verses of were you there uh, when they crucified my Lord. Uh, we'll be uh, extinguishing candles, uh, and then also just entering into some times of silence and reflection where we have the opportunity to think about uh, the story and, and and find ourselves in it and then just be be challenged to really feel the weight of, of what's happening on Good Friday. Uh, and then Saturday, we have our Easter egg extravaganza at Good Sam at 10 o'clock. Um, and then... Yeah, then Sunday morning is the big day. It's Easter. And so we'll have our youth-led sunrise service at 7.30. We have two guest speakers for that, uh, Grayson Veltkamp and Claire Kappeman will both be presenting messages uh, during the service. We have some great special music lined up. Uh, from our from our from our youth group and from our church, um, and then we'll be having an all church breakfast at eight thirty, and then our normal worship time for the resurrection celebration at ten o'clock, where we kind of just have all hands on deck because we'll hear from the choir, we'll hear from the praise band, we'll sing a hymn. We'll, I believe that Abby Stearns is going to play some trumpet. Um, it's just going to be a very very big service, so we have mm -hmm. the opportunity to to truly celebrate the resurrection uh, and uh, yeah, dig into. Uh, we're going to be digging into the Gospel of Mark. Uh, Mark's tell telling of the resurrection story uh, is kind of wild. Um, it, it's, it's very different than the John story. Um, and it actually ends with the women not saying a word. Um, you know, Jesus tells them to go and tell the disciples. And in the traditional ending of Mark's Gospel, they don't. They are too afraid. Uh, that was so un unsatisfactory to the original hearers of the Gospel of Mark that people have added on a tradition uh, that that says that the women did go and tell, but we are actually going to stop um, on the traditional the traditional story of the Gospel of Mark uh, because that just it's such an unsatisfying ending that it invites us into the story so much more to be the ones that now write the end of that story, the ones that really participate in that story because we now live forth the resurrection. We become a part of that story by carrying that story forward. The women are presented with the opportunity to go and tell, and they choose not to. What will we do? Because we're presented with that same opportunity. Are we the ones that will go forth and tell the story of the resurrection, or are we too afraid? It's my hope and mm -hmm. my prayer that we're not, and that we do become those that that go forth and proclaim the resurrection and go forth and live the resurrection. Um, but we are given we're given a choice. So be kind of wrestling with that on Sunday morning. I like it. That sounds yeah. great. Should be good. Yeah, sounds good. Well, thanks for joining us on this week's Cut for Time podcast. Join us again next week uh, in person. Well, in any of the services and over the next few days. Yep. Uh, and then back here for the podcast next week. Thanks for listening to our Cut for Time conversation. Join us for worship in person or on Facebook Live Sundays at 10 o'clock Central Time. And now go in peace and serve the Lord.